Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. And uh, I'd like to start off with a small apology that I've not been around of late. Um, but I did explain a little while ago that uh, we were moving and that has actually happened. Um, and uh, my old observatory was decommissioned and dismantled and everything's not quite where it should be at the moment and uh, I've actually been missing a few clear opportunities so bit of a shame but uh, I will be back the bigger and better um, but at the moment unfortunately I don't even have my PC up and running properly so I'm going to be videoing this on my GoPro and hopefully uploading it through my laptop with no editing and just sending it out uh, I just wanted to get something out there and the reason I'm doing a video is I had been approached a little while ago by a company to say would I have a look at a product that they're looking to launch uh, in uh, this month in December and I said yeah sure um, happy to happy to have a look um, it seems to be the way things are going with uh, people doing these sort of uh, electronic telescopes, little automated systems. And I know that um, Queeve the Lazy Geek uh, has been reviewing one by a company called Dwarf Lab. Um, Astrostase has received the same one. And the one that I've received has also been received by my good friend Joe Navarra of Joe's Astrophoto in Colorado. And uh, Joe told me all about it. And I told him I got the same thing. So what I'll do is uh, I'm going to put a link in my description to Joe's video. So you can look at me doing this unboxing. And then if you want to see what Joe's thoughts are on it, you can do that too. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to unbox this, show you what I see. And we'll have a little think about what, what, it, what it is and uh, what, what you get for your money. So I think it's priced around the $400 mark. It's come from China and um, well, we'll open it up and have a look at everything. So I've got three boxes and it's by, not Dwarf Lab, this one's by Beaver Lab. Um, let's have a look here what we've got. We've got, so this looks like a tripod and uh, they sort of class this as an intelligent uh, electronic telescope intelligent astronomical telescope so it will be interesting to see what this actually comprises of um, and I think what will be most important is um, you know what the quality will be like Price-wise, um, well, it will depend what's in here, but um, it's not too bad when you think you're actually getting a telescope and a camera. But of course, it will depend on how it performs. So this is um, a tripod. Doesn't look overly substantial, but... It feels like it's metal. So let's have a look there. Yep, it is. Okay, quite basic. We've got a bit of adjustment there, so we've got quite a bit of height. Um, but, uh, yep, okay. Obviously, it depends what it's going to be holding to whether or not it's uh, adequate for the job. You know, I've got two more boxes here. I've got a one that looks like it's the telescope itself. And I've got a smaller box here. This is the, this is box number three. I've opened it in box two, box three, and box one. Okay. This looks like it's a solar filter we've got a cable It'll be interesting to see what you get and how easy everything is to set up packaging's quite nice let's put that 
over there. Looks like we've got the uh, ah, the instruction manual. So we'll have a look at that in a bit. Let's uh, have a look at box number one. I'm sure they would love you to uh, have opened box number one first. I'm not always conventional. Well, I'm just going to move this big box because this is going to be in the way. So this could be quite useful because it could give me something to uh, play with while I'm sorting everything else out. Um, I had actually had a plan to rebuild my observatory, but plans change, as they say. Okay, let's have a look here. This looks quite nice, it's got a case. That seems to be their little emblem, little, little beaver wearing glasses. Um, and it seems to have some straps there, obviously, to hold the, uh, the tripod, so that's a little carry case there. The handles. Quite nice. Okay. Let's see what's inside. Now we've got a star chart, constellation chart. Hello universe. So I'll have a look at that in a moment and see what's in there. Um, we've got a little part there. Got some little attachments there. And this, there's a few caps in here. I'm wondering whether these should be on something, but uh, they're not. And here we have a telescope. So, actually, in a metal finish. Bit of an unusual shape. Uh, it's got a compass on the top there. That rotates, so I think that would most probably sit like that. So it says it's um, focal length of 500 millimeters at f 6.1. Now I know that this is their version one, and it doesn't come with. Um, tracking ability so um, they're saying that it can be used in the daytime obviously with the uh, beta they called it a beta sunglasses but um, with the solar filter hopefully that means you can do some images on the Sun um, I would think that for the moon it would be quite suitable because with a focal length of 500 millimeters and no tracking if you were to use, say, the 500 rule, it's going to give you one second exposures, so or less. So we'll have to see what that does. Now, you have to be on a very bright target to get any deep sky images. Um, okay, we've got lens at the front there. Just having a look there. It looks like it's got squared off a bit in there, but there's the... There's your glass there, and I did read on their website that it's a four-layered... I mean, you're not going to be getting FPL glass or fluorite or anything here, but this says it's a four-layer green film optical telephoto lens. It's an 83mm large diameter giving you an aperture of f6.1 with a focal length of 500 millimeters 
and then it says plus, so I'm not sure what the plus is for, but it's got a four layer coating. So be interesting to see um, what that actually uh, produces. Um, I mean, this is not on Apo, Apo or anything. It's an Acro, if anything. So um, we've got some other bits here. I think that's a finder scope. Um, so I'm gonna put that down there. I'm just going to lay this down for a second because there's another thing inside this bag and then we can maybe have a look at the instructions putting it together. Okay, I'm just going to put the bag down. I'm assuming that this is the camera. Now, um, I also saw on the documentation that it's got a Sony sensor but I haven't yet uh, been able to spot what sensor it's using. This is quite a small unit, so I'm assuming it's a very, very small sensor. Now, if this is 500 millimeters with a very small sensor, it's gonna be zoomed in quite a bit, so I don't know how that's gonna work with something like the moon. Okay. There's got a button there. Not got many button on the back. I think that's actually looking at it. That's most probably a charging point or a connection. So USB C. What's that say under there? Reset. Okay. This looks like a cap, which it is. That's a pretty small sensor. It's about half the size of my uh, small fingernail. I don't know if that is going to show very well. Let me just see if I can bring up the screen so I can see what it's showing you. But the sensor is in there. Um, that's my little finger. So as you can see, it's a very small sensor. Um, but they are saying it is a Sony sensor. Let me have a quick look. <clears throat> it's a Sony Star Level 5M CMOS sensor. Sony CMOS. With a MediaTek dual frequency high speed algorithm platform i'm taking it that's the ram that it uses um so large computing force platform stars and sensors so yeah there's very little information on the actual specs but um yeah we'll have a look at that in a bit or later and it's just showing that it can do long exposures for star trails um there's adjustments that it can do for saturation. It's also got a digital zoom to four times, contrast adjustment and sharpness. So it looks like it's got a few features, but again, got to use them to find out whether they're of any use. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have a look at the instructions and see if I can actually put this thing together and show you what it looks like uh, uh, what's the word? Beaver Lab Astronomical Telescope. So let's construct this. Maybe that's the word I was thinking of. Product overview, we'll see how easy this is to build. Focal lamp, usage instructions, special warning, don't look at the sun without a filter on it. Tripod. Put it on a tripod, quick release screw rod. So we're gonna put it on a tripod, 
and do it up. It's as simple as that. Right. Here's the tripod. Here's the scope. There's three prongs that go in there. And this goes underneath. I suppose the nice thing is it does all fit in that case, which wouldn't be too bad. So I'm assuming we can obviously find north. I mean, that's, you know, to be honest with the short exposures and the fact it's not tracking, I'm not sure how much of uh, a use that is, but we've got a swivel here and it's got a locking screw there. It's plastic and It holds it in place, but there's a little bit of wobble there. There's a very funny thing here. It's almost like a, I'm not sure what this is. It looks almost like a pump, a little tea handle. So um, let me turn it that way so you can see the markings on it, the beaver lab. Okay. So I think you would loosen that and that allows you to You've got markings here, I think, for your latitude and longitude settings. And lock that. Yeah, that locks that in place. So that will be that part. Okay. Right then. Let's have a look more. There's some more instructions. Okay, let's have a look. So we've done that, that's good. Installation of the image collector. Get the image collector and insert the locking card on the side of the image collector onto the notch of the zenithal mirror. And then rotate the image collector to align the mark point on the fixed jam. So that looks like cap. cap came off there. I would say that this, and it's got a mark here for locking it in. The only thing is this picture shows something for that to go into, which I don't believe there it is. Maybe this just goes in. There's no mark on here. I can feel the pin. There's a pin there, so. And that locks on. And that's it. Okay. Install the star finder. This has a little locking screw here. So I think you've got to undo that. Get the pin out of the way. And we put that on there. So my first initial thoughts is it's an interesting looking piece of kit. Um, 
it feels, I don't know, a bit toyish maybe, but to be fair, that's hard to say. Until I actually use this, I would not like to give a full opinion on it because um, it could be better than it looks. Um, but it's a funny looking thing, especially with this shaped contraption here. Um, Tighten the fixing of the star finder, so obviously that's gonna help you aim it. So looking at something like the moon, the finder's gonna help you if it's aligned well. Um, but it's fixed on there, there's no flex on it, so it should hopefully. Right, replace the battery. On the star finder there's a, okay, there's a battery that goes in there. Um, it's got a red dot star finder. A tripod is placed when you move dust cover, place for Okay, so this is the dust cover which uh, was supposed to actually be on the end there like that, uh, but it wasn't. Um, and I'm looking at it, I think when you want to do solar. I wouldn't be surprised if this just fits on the end of that. I'm gonna have a little look. So it looks like it's um, it's just a piece of uh, solar film. Uh, yes. So that fits on the end there. And that's gonna give you your protection for, if I just angle this down for solar imaging. I suppose you could take that off, this might cut down some light for the moon, and that would give you your full aperture. So, again, until you try it out, it's hard to know how will it perform. But, uh, I don't know, it could, this could be actually quite a nice gift for a young, budding astronomer. Um, it's not going to give you the ability for views. I don't know if an eyepiece can be included on this. It looks like it is just by camera, but that could be a bit of fun too. So let's just have a look here. Yeah, there is a reset button built in here. That's why it says reset, but um, it's actually got a type C indicates data transmission. Uh, there's a light that lights up on the back as a ring when it's collecting. Um, it's got standby state after three minutes. If it blinks blue, uh, it means the USB port is not connected. Um, okay. And you looks like you press this button on the back and that starts it collecting data. Mm-hmm, yeah, it's like you charge it up. And then we've got a mobile phone app, which I will need to look at. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop this video now um, because what I need to do is download the app. And uh, it looks like this is uh, battery operated, so it's gonna need charging up. Um, and I'm also going to need to have an opportunity to get to use it. At the moment, I don't have any opportunities. Um, the moon is up and about, so um, I think in a night or two there is some clear skies, which would hopefully give me an opportunity to have got to grips with the app and get this actually out and have a look at what we can do. So what I'd like to do is end this video now and I'll do a part two where I'll actually go through the operation of it. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a, quite a nice piece of equipment. Um, it, it all looks okay, um, feels quite robust. Um, again, 
it will all be on how it performs. So um, I will get it tested and I'll get back to you. So hopefully I will speak to you soon. And uh, hopefully, not like me, you'll have clear skies. See you later.